Okay, so here we are in the project, but before I confront you with this whole um, entirety of code, um, I want to show you what this looks like, um, so, you get a, so you get a good grasp of what we are actually doing here. So this is a GitHub project, I'm going to link it in the description by someone called LunarFang416, and uh, you can see a little demo of what is going to happen uh, right here on the GitHub page. Essentially, the URL will be um, animated in a bunch of different frames. And there is um, an explanation on how to contribute to this. And also there is an online demo. So if you click right here, um, you get to this page. Now at first, this might look a bit confusing, but uh, if you take a closer look, the URL up here is already animated. Um, but we're not gonna be looking too much at this page, um, uh, at this one, but instead we are gonna host this locally. So you can do this to, um, by going to uh, code and then you have three options to clone this github repo the one I usually do is the HTTPS one so you can go into your CMD and then in here you can type uh, git clone and then put this um, URL, URL right here and clone that wherever you want it and uh, you also can do this via SSH or the github CLI which I don't want to get into right now and uh, if you've cloned this to your um, to your local machine you can start it up with um, npm start. So this is not a Next.js, but a normal React application. And then you can go to the local host. And once we're on the local host, uh, you can already see there is a default animation playing. Um, and I'm gonna find some way in the uh, Premiere where I'm editing my videos to make this URL bar a bit larger, as you can see better. As you can see, it says, click on an animation and that repeats. And um, if we take a look at the source folder, and I can make the code just a bit larger for you, and then go into the animations, as we can see, there is a bunch of them. Oh wow, there is a bunch of them. And we're gonna um, take a look at how some of these are structured and built, and then how they look um, in the browser. So let's start with the base one. Um, and that would be the default one right here. So as you can see, when we take a look at the browser, it says click on an animation. And the way it's done is with the frames being right here, then um, some conditional logic here with an if statement, um, and the the changing of the frames is actually handled on the, uh, wait, it's not called underscore app, but it is, I believe it's the home component in this file, so let's go into the home.tsx, here we are, and uh, this is the one we were at um, at the start of the video, and this is where the logic is handled. So essentially, we have an interval, and every 50 milliseconds, we are updating the state of the animation. Now, these frames last a bit longer, so not every frame lasts exactly 50 milliseconds, because that, in this case, would be way too short to actually be readable. So as you can see, we have the uh, past timestamp uh, greater than 1000, so this is changing every um, one second, so that makes it way more readable. Now let's take a look at the uh, shark animation first. So let's, uh, let's go in here, and I think that is one of the coolest. And um, if you take a look at the code, it seems very abstract, right? But we can try to guess what will happen. So this will represent the fin of the shark that is going to stick out of the water, and then the water is going to be rep represented uh, by this underscore right here, and the edges of the uh, ocean in this case will be represented by a hashtag. Um, so let's take a look at how this works uh, in the browser. Let's click the shark, and as you can see, the URL is animated with a shark animation. Now this is cool, though the user experience definitely suffers. Uh, so you can't uh, select parts of the URL, for example, because it is updated so often, um, you can't really select it. So that is an issue that would not be good for user experience at all, but it does look uh, pretty neat. Um, then there's like the swim animation with the swimmer just swimming around. It's absolutely hilarious. There's a plane. Look at how cool that is. Like a bunch of dots and you can see it uh, being updated every 50 milliseconds here and then it's gonna turn around. Um, so we could check that out, uh, the, the plane. You can see they're all structured uh, quite similarly in TypeScript. Um, so the plane is a base animation type and I believe yeah, they're all a um, base animation type. Uh, 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 yes, they are. Um, that's what that type is for, with a name, a creator property. Um, so if you were to contribute, then your name would um, go here. 
and then we have uh, the actual frames that the animation consists of. So here you can see the uh, the airplane of the uh, the the body of the airplane, and then also there's a propeller. So this thing in front is supposed to be uh, supposed to be the propeller, which is absolutely hilarious. And there's a flip with a guy flipping a table. Um, the wave animation. There's a bunch of waves actually. Two of them. The bounce. Some of them. Like this one I'm not really a fan of, to be honest. There's a rolling O, a squiggle, and interestingly enough, um, when I tried out, tried out this library the first time, the squiggle um, is actually not being reset when you flip to another animation. So whenever you go back to the squiggle, it doesn't start from scratch, um, but it just continues. As you can see, the this is not updated every 50 milliseconds either, I believe, squiggle... Yeah, okay, as you can see, it's a bit longer, uh, so it's every 100 milliseconds, and uh, I noticed that in the animation. You see, it, it is a bit slower. Um, there's a lot of source animations where there's a text in the middle, and then there are uh, then there's some stuff going out from that, and then there's a lot of spinner animations. Um, and if you take a look at these spinner animations, um, you can actually see uh, what they will be about just by looking at the code. Um, so, for example, uh, the, the first one, will just be an arrow spinning around. Um, you can see some properties here, the, the speed you can configure. Um, so let's click the spinner one and you'll see the arrows just spinning around. And let's see what happens when we increase the speed, right? Okay, that didn't seem to be doing too much. Let's put it up to 500 and go back to the spinner. And that actually seems to be slower. Interesting. So the spinner seems to be slower when we push up the speed. Let's go to 5,000. Let's see what happens. Oh, that is in mi oh, that is in milliseconds. Okay, so we probably uh, we probably want to go lower at this point. Let's restart. Aha, there we go. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Now the spinner. Okay, what if we push this to like 10? That would be insane, right? Spinner. Yeah, this is just absolute chaos. Okay, um, let's go to the second one. And we can already take a guess what will happen. Apparently, it's uh, cubes that get smaller and larger vertically. So let's take a look at the spinner. Yes, it is. And we can also do some random bad stuff with the speed. So let's try five milliseconds. Well, yeah, it's pretty fast. Not that fast. That looks actually quite all right. There's a bunch of spinners, like, um, they, they expand horizontally. Uh, you got a bunch of cubes just spinning around. <laughs> this is uh, absolutely hilarious. And then I think, yeah, the rest of them are all spinners. Okay, that's pretty much all I want to show you. Like, uh, I think the concept is very interesting. Obviously, for user experience, um, it's, it's not the best thing. The project is pretty simple. Uh, so if you want, just feel free to uh, play around with it or add another... Um, you know, URL animation if you feel like it, if you want to contribute to this project. Um, and that's pretty much all I want to show you. I think it's so cool that people come up with these concepts. Um, like as a reference to the start of the video, everything that can be animated will be animated. It's kind of true. So a big shout out to Lunar Fang. If you want, uh, I'm going to link the GitHub repo in the uh, description. So start if you want. I think it's pretty pretty neat idea. And with that said, I hope you enjoyed the video, found the concept as funny as I did. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one and bye bye.